Hi, hello, I'm Louise Quick, I'm a professional history nerd, and this is Quick Histories. I'm really excited about today's episode because it's our first requested video. The request came in from Jordan Schiller, who does also happen to be the most dedicated medieval fan that I know of. If you would like to request a topic for a future video, head to my Ko-fi page, buy me a coffee and drop a request in the box there. In a recent video of mine, I had the audacity, the audacity to suggest that the first real Queen of England was Lady Jane Grey, which I still stand by. It's one theory. However, History is annoying, and there is another woman from the past vying for the title of arguably actually the first Queen of England. So forget Lady Jane Grey, because today's episode is all about Empress Matilda, baby. Matilda was born in 1102. She was the daughter of the King of England, Henry I, and the granddaughter of William the Conqueror. So yeah, straight out the gate, she's kind of a big deal. Now, I would tell you about her childhood, but she didn't really have much of one, considering that at just eight years old, she was betrothed to the Holy Roman Emperor, Henry V, and sent to live with him in Europe. Yeah, I don't, I don't have time to go into all of that today. This meant that she essentially grew up as the Empress of the Holy Roman Empire, and she wasn't sitting around all day. In fact, from her late teens, she was known to have taken on some responsibility and would handle certain matters when her husband was off emperoring around Europe. Emperoring? You know what I mean. Doing his emperor thing. However, everything changed for Matilda when in 1120, her younger brother and heir to the English throne drowned. And then just a few years later, her own husband died as well. At only 23 years old, Matilda found herself a widow and also the only direct heir to her father, the King of England. Being the woke feminist father type that Henry I was, I don't know enough about Henry I to make that claim, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. <laughs> He declared that his daughter, Matilda, would inherit the crown after him. He even had his barons swear an oath pledging their allegiance to his decision and to her. So then there were a few years where Matilda went to France and she married Geoffrey Plantagenet, Count of Anjou, otherwise known for the rest of this video at least as Jeff. Our mate Jeff. Jeffers. But then in 1135, it all kicked off. Henry I died, but rather than Matilda becoming queen, as was intended, her cousin, Stephen of Blois, Blois? I can't say that word. Stephen of Blois? Stephen. Swooped in the cheeky git and had himself crowned King of England. And all of those barons who had pledged allegiance to Matilda clearly just turned a blind eye. But why did Stephen and his supporters think that he had a more valid claim to the throne than Matilda? Well, he was male. And that's about it. He was male. That was enough for everyone, apparently. But Matilda was not going to take this lying down. She'd been an empress, gosh darn it. So along with her husband, our mate Jeff, she fought for what was rightfully hers. What followed was almost 20 years of civil war known as the Anarchy. It was a long and complicated slog, but there was one point where it looked like Matilda might win. In 1141, her forces had captured Stephen. However, she never quite reached the point of being crowned Queen of England. And then, for a number of reasons, Stephen was released. Soon after that, things flipped completely, and it was Stephen who had the upper hand when Matilda found herself essentially penned in to Oxford Castle. It was at this point, however, that Matilda made a daring escape in the middle of a harsh winter. It's said that while wearing white cloaks to camouflage herself among and amid all the snow, she snuck out of the castle and even walked across a frozen river, the River Thames, and walked miles to safety. Matilda had proven herself to be a force. However, as the anarchy raged on, she became Came, she came to realise that she wasn't fighting this war for herself anymore, rather for her son, Henry Plantagenet, or as we're going to call him because there's far too many Henrys in this story, Henners. And Henners was a worthy competitor to Stephen. Not only did he have that legitimate claim to the throne thanks to his mother Matilda, but he was male. 
So we're just going to skip over a few battles and cut to 1153 when both sides came to an agreement. Stephen could remain King of England, but it was Henna's who would inherit the crown, which he did just one year later when Stephen died. Convenient. So while Matilda's silly lady gender stopped her from wearing the crown, she used her sheer determination and an army of supporters to claim that crown for her son, Henna's who became King Henry II of England. And history's been quite hard on Matilda. Lists of English and British monarchs will often include Stephen, pretty much always include Stephen, but skip over Matilda completely. Yes, she technically was never formally crowned Queen of England, but she inherited that crown and spent decades fighting for it. But what do you think? Was Matilda the real first Queen of England? Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. If you like this fact, remember to give it a like, share it with your friends and family, and head to the YouTube channel if you haven't, if you're not there already, and click the subscribe button. And again, if you want to request a topic for an upcoming video, or just really like this video and want to show some love, head to my Ko-fi page where you can buy me a coffee. Otherwise, I'm off to scribble Matilda's name into every list of British monarchs I can find. This might take me a while. History fact. <laughs>